Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today's a special episode. We are welcoming back Lakeisha Mazur on the line, who she is the, uh, first off, up, she's now an official author with Mission Matters. So she wrote about um, an abundance mindset. We're going to get into her writing today. Lakeisha is also a, uh, a podcast host. The uh, name of her show is Overlooked Business Basics um, on the Mission Matters Podcast Network. And then, of course, uh, let's just say, Lakeisha, your day job as business development advisor and co founder of Legal Help for biz that's the number four biz biz.com lakeisha uh welcome back to the show always a pleasure thank you for having me back adam i didn't blow it the first time so it's great <laughs> to come back as a second time <laughs> hey i was just thinking as i'm doing the intro i'm like your title's getting longer and longer we got a part-time job over here at mission matters i'm loving it <laughs> hey you know what the year of me just super blessed and just you know a really great opportunity to partner with you guys and be on the podcast network and be an author. And I'm just like, wow, <laughs> I've got a moniker now. <laughs> I, you sure do. And I'm so uh, proud and happy and thrilled to have you on the network and, uh, and to continue to see all the great work you're putting out. But uh, we got a lot to cover today. So we'll, of course, be covering the book. We'll be uh, talking about the, your podcast. Of course, I want all of my listeners to go out there and check it out. And then, of course, we're going to get into your business as well. So LegalHelpForBiz.com. So um, before we start all of that, though, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Lakeisha, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Lakeisha, what mission matters to you? Being a helper to humanity in the best way that I can be utilized, whether that's a friendly ear as a business resource or a community resource. It's great and uh, great having you back on. And I guess just to get us kicked off here, um, let's go a little bit further back. I don't want to assume that uh, all of our new listeners and viewers caught some of our previous work. So maybe just start off by telling us a little bit more about how you got on this path as an entrepreneur. Well, um, it started with uh, being a corporate life insurance agent. And I learned about the marketing technique of event marketing for lead generation. And I became like the queen of event marketing. <laughs> and I just like kept going. And then as I added some more products with the identity theft protection mm -hmm. and the legal insurance, I started doing health and safety fairs for the local communities at um, health, like health and safety fairs for the community, but also school health and safety fairs because mm. child identity theft was, I mean, it still is, it's running rampant. I mean, of course, COVID's happened now. So all that stuff is spiked, but no one's looking out for the little ones. So I wanted yeah. to make sure there was some awareness like, hey, family, your little ones there. I mean, you know, there's, they're starting kindergarten and uh, they've got a mortgage. What is up with that? Yeah. What happened there? No, it's it's uh, it's important the work that you're doing, and I'm glad and I'm happy to to shed light on that. Um, but I'm curious about these these early this idea of entrepreneurship. So you know, a lot of people that maybe start off in the corporate world like you did, and then maybe decide to go that entrepreneur route, or they're thinking about going that entrepreneur route. Um, what are your thoughts on like what people should have in mind before they kind of take that leap? I think a clear concept of what you want to do to replace what you're currently doing. Like how, what income level do you need to be comfortable at as you fulfill your dream and work your dream while you stop working the dream of someone else as their employee, whether it's salary or hourly, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, what dream are you replacing it with now that you finally realize man, I'm just not happy. I'm not feeling fulfilled. Yeah, it's paying the bills, but am I happy? You know, am I coming home to my wife or my husband and my kids? And and I, am I happy when I walk through the door or am I just exhausted and I just want to like go lay down somewhere? Yeah. 
And I don't, I don't think that's something we talk about enough, that idea of, of sacrifice and what it takes to really be an entrepreneur and to really make that, that happen. That idea of not having that, let's just say consistent check coming every, you know, a couple of weeks or whenever it comes, um, like talk a little bit more about the sacrifice and what it really takes, like in your experience, like what does it take to go out there and to really, you know, plant, uh, to really, um, uh, hang your shingle and, uh, and plant that flag. You gotta learn your value. Um, you got to learn your value as the breadwinner or the secondary breadwinner. You know, mm-hmm. you got to know your value of what you are bringing to the marketplace mm-hmm. and who your marketplace is that's actually going to, you know, know your value. Mm-hmm. Because if you if you are like, a, OK, well, I'll go with the highest one that in my mind I can think of. Yeah. I'm a business development advisor. I'm not a business coach, mm-hmm. but. Coaching is a booming business, you know, Mm -hmm. whether you're self-taught, you've got some mentorship and, you know, you're an affiliate of the program, but that's thousands of dollars depending on how high ticket you are. So your client is not going to be the mechanic and it's not going to be the owner of the mechanic shop. Do you see what I'm saying? It's, Mm -hmm. it's going to be like, you're going to, you're going to like match what you want to do to who's going to pay your price. You do have to know your value, but you also got to know, like if if you, if the person say they own four mechanic shops, yes, yeah. you they can be your client, but you got to know who can afford you hmm. because you have to keep the lights on too. Yeah. I mean, and starting I out it, when I was at the um, health and safety fairs and I was trying to transition into, yes, I'm teaching you how to use all these products, but actually hmm. there's some other things I, I know as well. And hmm. I, I didn't mean to throw out a price. Don't throw out a price until you really know, like test Mm. that price. And one lady was like, you do all that. And I was like, well, yeah, because I'm, I'm eager and I'm ignorance on fire. Mind you, I'm just trying to hang that shingle out there. Yeah. And she's like, do you know what the other people are charging? And I'm like, no, like, (laughs) because (laughs) once it's revealed now it can't be concealed. So now I'm like, how much? And then she's like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, so I was, I had to go back and reevaluate myself. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, I do bring all that. Hold on. Oh, mm, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now I need to find the people that are going to know my value and can, and can afford my value. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the interesting things, and we'll talk more about this, of course, is, uh, is, is on your podcast. You are really walking through and taking people through some of those, uh, those early journeys, but also just the basics, right? Oh, um, the basics yes. of business and what, and what can be expected and really how to survive and, and thrive in it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's uh, let's let's switch it up a bit right, for a moment. I, I want to get into the book. So an abundance mindset, the key to business success. Um, what was the inspiration behind this? Not having a big enough marketing budget <laughs> mm. <laughs> to grow and scale my business that I was I had whined about it for years. To myself yeah. <laughs> and to God, I'm like, if I just had this marketing, I have all these ideas. I have these one page mm-hmm. marketing plans, you know, four different ways to market four different products, which is 20 marketing plans, you know, to yeah. find the best one. That way I'm not shotgunning my marketing. I'm mm-hmm. straight arrowing what I need it to do. And then I just happen to have a tragic but wonderful mm-hmm. windfall to where I actually got the marketing budget. And I Mm. deployed as much funds into everything that I had, but it Mm. was already, the plan was already done. See, when Mm. you get the money, it's after you get the plan. You can't just, Mm. okay, I want some money. Okay. And then what the money is, you don't know what to do with it. That's like Mm -hmm. a budget. You know, it's still a budget. It's still business budget. You got to tell that money where it goes. Otherwise you're going to buy stuff or people are worse yet. People, even though you have it lined up to what you were going to buy and invest Mm. in, there's those emails, those shiny object emails, those mm-hmm. phone calls, those text messages. And the next minute, you know, you spent your marketing budget on all these other avenues versus what you had lined out. Because mm. some of my stuff, I had um, a direct mail campaign yeah. and I wanted to deploy that. And for like two years, I sat on the design of that business, that that postcard. And I finally deployed. I was like, yes. And I got to see the actual ROI instead of studying the ROI, I actually got to get the ROI for it doing wow. the actual direct mail. So 
Yeah. So I want I want to pick apart the chapter a bit and 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 what you contributed to the book. So the five things you need to build an abundance mindset overall. So priority management, um, knowledge, affirmation, self awareness, and long term plan. So I want to maybe pick one or two of these to um to uh, kind of elaborate on a little bit further. So let's start with priority management. So tell us a little bit more about that. Priority management. Yes, it's the priority. It's not the to-do list. Most mm-hmm. people think it's like the to-do list, but it's it's a little deeper than the to-do list because you have to see what your priorities. Like if you something was on fire and you have to run in the burning building, what are you going to mm-hmm. save first? And mm-hmm. that's how I look at priority management. You know, like yeah. I have to return these phone calls. Yeah. I have to return these emails, but which phone calls are more important. Like, did they call yesterday? Mm -hmm. Do I have a business meeting at a set time that I need to make that call? Mm -hmm. You know, do I have a doctor's appointment that I actually cannot move? Like, you know, or I need to pay something and I have to actually call in like, Mm -hmm. and those are my, and I only have three of these. Like, because it's not time management, because we all have the same amount of time. That's why it's not time management. It's priority management. And I have three things that I like to make two of them business. One of them is going to be personal. And Mm -hmm. then that way I can feel satisfied and achieve versus the to-do list. This never-ending to-do list, Mm -hmm. which as an entrepreneur, you're going to have. It's it's a never-ending to-do list. And if you think that I'll just put the top three, no, because things are going to happen. You're going to have a fire which yeah. are the worst because someone called in sick. If you've got a team, um, some meeting got canceled, but there's still a deadline for something else. So it, no, mm-hmm. it's priority management. Like how are those fires <laughs> going to be put out if they find their way into my top three? And mm-hmm. usually it's like, okay, this is a fire. Let me put this out. If I can't delegate it to somebody. Yeah. Don't now I, I have <laughs> now I happen to know that you are quite a planner. You're a planner, planner, planner. I think from from a lot of uh, people that are watching this now, and they think about how you plan your marketing in advance. A lot of other things. I know you plan your podcast in advance. A lot of things. You, you put a lot of work in the planning side of things. For for those that are kind of struggle with this priority management, I, I don't know if you started that way and you were always that way in terms of being able to prioritize correctly or or adequately. But what kind of things would you tell them as they're as they kind of Again, on their journey of management? Like, what would you tell them to help them out? Well, you know, I actually did start out with time management. Mm. I did. I started with, I did start with time management. I time blocked. I do time block. So that's about as much time management as I do. Mm. I time block. Like I get that, well, Tuesday through Friday calendar because I don't do Mondays. Mm. (laughs) But, um, and then just like color, like with crayons, pencil, whatever you need to do. And then keep in mind, Put your family in there, put Mm -hmm. your workout in there, put your prayer time, your meditation. You got to put that in there. You know, I'm not the type of person where I need to wake up at 430 in the morning to like jog and work out and pray. And Mm -hmm. then I start my day. No, I get up at 930. (laughs) I like sleep. (laughs) <laughs> That's my priority. I can't serve you if I'm groggy. I can't serve you. Mm-hmm. And I don't run on coffee. So I really need sleep. I can't, I don't run on coffee. Now, oh, you didn't have your coffee yet? No, didn't have enough sleep yet. How may I help you? you yeah. What? Like, that's not professional. So I block in some sleep. Um, I know my energy time. You should know your energy time too. Because mm. if you have high energy certain times of the day, that's where you need to put your priority task into, Mm. you know, like if I have to get up to call Florida, I'm getting up at seven, you know, like I have to like block that. Like, like that's a done deal. I have to do that. You know, if it's central, okay. I have to block that in, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's because they're priorities because you've got East and then you've got central standard time. And then everything in the West coast is, eh, I'll get to it later because (laughs) we're, kind of like that over here. I'm sorry. I've done business and so many people on the West coast and eh, mm-hmm. I'll get to it later. So I'm like, cool. Yeah. Like that, that, that's another thing. Time zone priority. East coast mm-hmm. is my priority. And then moving all the way to where I live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause I know the culture of each region, probably yeah. too much knowledge to know, but it helps me. 
So I want to shift gears here for a moment or so. Uh, so Overlooked Business Basics. So your podcast, um, thrilled to be distributing this. And I, I'm just a big fan of the way that the the content is evolving over time and it just gets better and better. It started out good. Now it just keeps getting better and better. Um, so maybe just give to start off, give the audience a little bit of an overview about maybe some of the types of things you talk about on your show. Overlooked Business Basics is the you're either full time and you have a side hustle or you've been in business about one or two years and you're missing some of like the basics. And I mean, basics like you. I am not jabbing at realtors, but yep. they are the most easiest ones for this overlooked business basic. Mm. You spend money on those beautiful cars and you spend money on postcards, you know, for your little neighborhood nest, or I forgot what it's really called. <laughs> but when I look at your postcards and I look at your business cards and you have those wonderful photos, right? You spend all that money on that. And then I can contact you at your name at gmail.com. Hmm. Stop it. <laughs> at yahoo.com at hotmail.com. And iPhone is not good enough either. If you thought that was an upgrade, it's not. Okay. It's right up there with AOL. <laughs> you spend all this money and insurance agents do it too, but we don't put our pictures like over everything the way realtors do. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's a relational business. But if you're going to spend that, get that, get that professional email address, even if you already have a domain name, which is, should be your name technically, because mm -hmm. you know, you never know who you hang your shield, your shingle with. And yeah. then you get a free email address with that. Did you not know that? I'm, I, I'm just saying, because some softwares, because there's a lot of realtor stuff, software, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. He wants you to have a professional email address. Yeah. You know, it's great. So that's, that's my pet peeve. Mm -hmm. And realtors are the easiest people to like go after. I mean, insurance agents too. So, you mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm in that genre, but I have a professional email address. Mm. <laughs> So, so when we met, um, I mean, this was prior to the book, of course, prior to launching the podcast. And so now I'm curious and interested to hear. So now, um, now that you're on the other side, both as an author, and now we'll, we'll talk about the podcast a little bit more, but as a podcast host, um, what's been one of your favorite things about creating content and about getting it out there for people? Okay. So I'm a podcast hostess and I know host is like, but I like the ESSS after that, like, because mm. for me, I'm like the hostess. So like, I'm like the party hostess. I like your it. Business I like it. Ears. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> and I love it because here's the thing. I, in my mind's eye, one of my marketing ideas was like, oh my God, a YouTube channel, which I do have. But yeah. the problem was content posting. See, I've never mm. had a content problem. I always got something to talk about. If I get out <laughs> my house or I'm watching a webinar or I'm like watching television, you know, yeah. I'm going to have some content. It's <laughs> the accountability. Mm. <laughs> this is why I love Mission Matters. It's the accountability of uh, you need to turn that in. Mm. You need to turn that in. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now I have that wonderful accountability with you guys and it gets out there and I'm like, yay. And yeah. Honestly, when I'm doing it, it's a learned experience for me. It's mm. like um, what I talked about, I kind of, well, usually I live it true, you know, because you can't talk about what of you course. don't know, what you ain't lived through, right? Because that would make you fake and you wouldn't be yeah. authentic. For sure, for sure. And, but then I, even after I've done the show, I feel like this peace, like this, mm. oh, and I'm like, oh my God, this is so amazing. So, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's great, and uh, and and as I see the you you uh, b continue to build the catalog and build the uh, and the episodes, um, it's just it's just great to see that catalog evolve. Um, what's been one of your favorite episodes you've done? Like just one of the favorite topics you've spoken on or episodes that you've done to date? I would say um, business basics inventory, and I don't know what episode that is mm -hmm. because what business basics inventory was it was um it started like i had this sheet i found in my book and it had like website business cards it had like this checklist of all this stuff mm -hmm. so i was like oh cool those are my bullet points because when you're transitioning um from full time into your side hustle full time mm -hmm. you need that stuff like yeah. you you absolutely need that stuff and the things i harp on 
Look, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't harp on it if they weren't being overlooked all the time. So when people hear me about my business cards, I'm on point about the business cards. (laughs) Font size matters. I'm just saying. (laughs) Font size matters. That's the Font size matters. (laughs) And for those that listen and they're probably like, she sounds a little different. Hmm. You're absolutely right. I do sound a little different and it is deliberate and it is on purpose because I want to be that guilty pleasure in your ears. Mm. (laughs) But I love talking about it. I mean, it is, the stuff is overlooked. It's not stuff that, oh my God, it's, it's captain obvious, you know, it's Mm. captain obvious stuff that business owners do and they're still doing that's done. That's the, it's like, okay, you're two, three years still doing this. And I mean, there's a guy, and I didn't see it at first, but I was like, you've been in business for how many years doing what? And you make how much? And yet, if we need to submit support questions, mm-hmm. it's at gmail.com. And you own like four domains. Like I said, and I was just like, oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> stop, stop it. It's free. You already bought the domain name. You have a team of people. There is a technician that should tell you that. You know, even and then there's another company. They make a lot of money too, and they send emails, but they didn't check their uh, their DK like the the disc scam or something. But yeah. it's basically it verifies your hardcore domain to where you're sending stuff, so you don't end up in the spam file. Yeah. yeah. So like, there's just little things like that. I'm like, this company's worth how much? And I, their stuff is keeps. I have to keep saying it's not spam. It's not spam. So. Mm. It's just, it's just stuff that is right there. You know, I'm not digging up new stuff. Mm. (laughs) It's good. It makes it easy. (laughs) It's good. And I feel like uh, all of us out here, uh, well, first off, somebody's watching this and they, and they got to at Gmail, they're going to be like, they're going to be hopefully working on that one as of today. Right. Um, Hopefully. But but the good thing is, is that especially for, for business owners um, is that a show like yours is it's kind of, you know, we all get busy, right? I'm sure when the, when the individual set up that business in all sincerity, they were thinking of all these other things. And then, you know, the years passed by and then like, wait a minute, I didn't even think about that. So it's not only a refresher for people that should be kind of focusing on some of these basics, in my opinion, but uh, for those that are new, it's just it's just a head start, right? It's a head it start. Is. So maybe you don't make some of the mistakes that you don't have to make all the mistakes, right? You learn from other people's mistakes and or experiences. And then hopefully that speeds up their um, ability to succeed and to thrive in their business, which is the goal, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to spend some time on, on your business. So legalhelpforbiz.com. So tell us a little bit more about what you do. Okay. So legal health, the number four, biz.com is a legal services agency. So we Mm -hmm. cater to business owners, individuals, and families providing Mm -hmm. legal insurance, life insurance, health insurance, Mm -hmm. and cyber insurance. Now, identity theft insurance would be the consumer side, but Mm -hmm. cyber insurance would be the business side. And Mm -hmm. any combination of those, if I've got a business owner, I can also do voluntary benefits. Mm -hmm. So, but I focus on the B2B. (laughs) And what type of clients do you typically work with? Do you work with um, only large, like enterprise, middle market? Do you also have like programs for the small business owner? Like give us a little bit of that feel. I'm small business owner, mom and pop, you know, they've, they've, they've been in business. They've got some notoriety, nothing too big. I don't want to stretch myself thin Mm. and, even though like, and I thought about it when I originally started, because I was like, mm-hmm. what if they want me to fly somewhere? What if they want me to, and I was like, I don't want to do that. This was before COVID mm-hmm. and Zoom. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, now I guess I could, but <laughs> I don't, I, I'm like, I don't want to scale like that. I just want my nice little core four yeah. books that I can put that personal touch on and love mm-hmm. on them. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, Lakeisha, it has been great having you back on the show. Thrilled to promote this book with you. Um, and of course, your your podcast. Uh, I just have to ask, we're going into 2023 as we record this, or maybe the next round, people will be listening to it um, early 2023. So uh, I just have to say, what's next? What's next for you? What's next for your business? You know what? Um, I actually launched, like this year, I launched LH for Biz 
mm-hmm. Enterprises, my LLC for business development advisory services. And I'm actually going to grow that a little bit in the real estate field. Mm-hmm. Because I have such nice notoriety from being a podcast hostess now and an author. So it has strengthened my branding yeah. and uh, powered my 10 licensed states. So now I'm like, okay, let's get a little real estate going on. Yeah. That way I can make more cash flow, but still work with ones that necess- can't necessarily afford my services. So it gives me a chance to do a little bit of philanthropy and keep my lights on. Yeah. Because that's no, what I want. Awesome. I want like philanthropy, but I still want to keep my lights on. <laughs> so if uh, if somebody's watching this and they want to learn more and they want to also connect with you, um, what's the best way for them to do that? I have a, is it called Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> you can catch me on the IG at L-E-M-A-Z-U-R-B like birthday, D like doggy, A like apple. So it's Lynn, yeah. Lee Mazer, B-D-A. Oh, and put that little at symbol thing, and then you can catch me on the gram, the IG. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lakeisha, always great having you back on the show. Um, so, so much fun. It's just so much fun. One of my favorite um, individuals to interview. So, this has uh, been a lot of fun for me. And just to let everybody know, we'll put all that information in the uh, in the show notes so that you can just click on the link and go go check out uh, Lakeisha's Instagram page, and obviously, of course, the website as well. Um, And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters or listening to an episode, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives, having them showcase their mission, the reason behind their mission, and really what they're out there doing in the world trying to make it a better place. Um, If that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or exciting to you, hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Lakeisha, again, as always, it's been a pleasure. Looking forward to watching your, your show continue to grow and to promoting this book with you. So thanks again for coming on. Thank you so much, Adam.